Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Band of Barbers podcast. I'm your host, Devon Evans, and tonight is episode 53. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Um, You guys have no idea what it means to me for you guys to listen to the information that I'm I'm seeking to give away. Um, Tonight's episode, we're going to talk about the thought process behind making some money. Have you ever wondered why you are struggling to maximize what you're doing? Have you ever thought about the thought process that you have behind generating income behind the chair? Well, I've got a few questions for you, or I've got a few answers for you. One of those, I believe, is that subconsciously you are chasing money. You are being, you are being, you're being greedy, and you have to think about it in the sense of this: a barber's whole job is based around providing services to his community his or her community it's the whole it's it's providing services it's helping people to look and feel better we all know that a haircut can make a person not only look better look younger feel better about themselves we know that barbers, for some communities, it is the only therapist that people will ever see. And sometimes barbers will get this idea of, I've got to get all the money that I can get. I'm not doing nothing for free. You're going to pay me for my time, so on and so forth, this, that, and the third. And you have to stop and think about what it is you were doing. Now, if you went to a barber school, if even if you've been in a barber shop, uh, you started as an apprentice and you started in a barber shop, typically you're not going to start working in the, the creme de la creme of shops. You're not in the creme de la creme of schools. And even if you are, the services are so cheap, they, they, they bring in, um, People in the community who are either one financially conscious or two in a zone or in a scenario where they are struggling and or, or, or they just don't have the money to pay what other people are paying and you have to remember the foundation of your training of your education typically when you go into a shop And let's say you go into a shop and you have no clientele. You are going to get those older guys who don't really care about, you you know, they, they, listen, they come get a haircut like they take Advil in the morning. They're, they're just coming because my hair got too long. It's touching my ears. It's messing with my glasses. Uh, It's getting too, like, they're, they're just coming to do that. Like, they're not necessarily really looking generally for the greatest style or anything like that. They just want a haircut, right? And you have to understand that that is where you build your business. People at the end of the day just want a haircut, okay? And you have to keep keep that in mind. I understand that you, you have worked your way up and you've got all of these skills and you've been here this amount of time and and people going to pay what you, I get it. I do. I do. But guess what else happens in that scenario? In that scenario, that energy comes off to your customers. And for quite a few of them, maybe not all of them, but I would say the people that could potentially put you over top as far as your budget, as far as your your financial 
income, the people that can put you over the top, they're pushed away by the fact that they seem like, oh, you're only in this for money. Listen, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Money is a natural consequence. If you are willing to exchange your time in doing a certain task, which you decided to be a barber, money is a natural consequence at the end of that result. You guys have gone into an agreement and said, if I provide this service for you, that's that's what they're understanding. If I provide this service for you, then you're going to pay me X amount of dollars. That's what, you, that's what you're saying. That's what's going on. Okay, there's there's there is a unspoken or or contractual agreement, maybe not written down, but there's an agreement. They know they didn't come in the barbershop and the service was going to be free. Right. And if you're in a place where you're dealing with people running out or people complaining or or or, or things like that, and they're like, oh, I'm not paying for this. Give me, a, you know. Give me a little discount, or da 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 da. First of all, don't even entertain it. Your price is your price, right? One of the greatest things that I've ever heard another barber say. He said, "I don't do discounts on my services. It's either pay for, it's either paid at the price that I request, or it's free." So if you got a disagreement with someone who is, who is, let's say that may be refusing to pay you, you let the let them know. Don't argue with them. Tell them, hey, guess what? You're not happy with this service. I'm not going to charge you for this service. All that I ask is that you never come back and sit in my chair because I'm not the barber for you and you're not the client for me. That's all that I ask. And guess what they're going to say? They might go tell somebody that you messed them up. But you know what they're more than likely not going to do? Come back and sit in your chair. Or attempt to. And at that point, you've made you've made your stance clear. You And you understand, and they understand, that based on this interaction between between us, I am, I am no longer welcome. It, you, you have that right. I'm no longer welcome in his chair, so I'm not, I'm not going to come back. You have that right. It it is okay. But to argue with someone about your 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 ticket and what senseless. Am I saying go out here and 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 throw out hundreds of free haircuts? No. Some people listen. The type of people that would do things like that probably aren't your ideal customer anyway. They're probably a customer that you just took and you're like, all right, I'm a, I'm, you know, there might be a walk-in or, or something like that. They're, they're probably not your ideal customer. All right? And, and though I said that you need to have sk- the, the skills to provide a, a sufficient service to everyone, Everyone is not your client. But as a barber, you stand behind that chair as an expert in providing in, in providing hair cutting services. That's what people recognize you as. Right? You've taken training, you've spent time, you've learned, they recognize you as an expert. In providing hair cutting services, do I did I say that you need to have advanced knowledge in everything? No, but you need to have a basic knowledge in standard services. What does that mean? You need to understand how to use the clippers properly to to produce a fade. You need to understand how to use the shears properly to trim the top. You, you need to understand how to how to use your shears effectively, whether it be shear over comb, whether it be, uh, you know, point cutting. Like you need to understand how to do those things. Why? 
because you decided to be a bug. You know, one of the, 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 one of the things that I hear that I think is really, truly an excuse, right, is when people say, oh, uh, I don't cut your type of hair. The last time I looked in any barbering textbook in the, in, in the recent past, right, any of them. I'm pretty sure they teach you how to cut both textures of hair. They teach you how to cut all textures of hair. They don't say that this is traditional to this this type of ethnicity and this is traditional to that type of ethnicity. They teach hair based on straight, curly, wavy, kinky, things of that nature. One through one A through four C. Hair types. Not ethnicity. Hair types, not ethnicity. Do you understand that? Right? So again, guys, don't 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 chase the money away because it makes you uncomfortable to learn. Guess what? If you're in a shop and and and, and a client gets in your chair, guess what you can do? You can communicate and say, hey. Um, this is not, uh, I, 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 I struggle with this style or I struggle with this texture of hair, but I would like to learn, right. And give it a chance. I'm going to give it, I'm, I'm going to do the best that I can. I'm going to provide the best service that I can. If you do not like the service at the end of this, your service is free. If you do like it, then we already understand the agreement. If you're that uncomfortable, take the pressure off yourself. You don't like what I do, sir, ma'am. You don't have to you don't have to pay me for this service. But you should only be in that place for a short period of time if you are in that place at all. You should only be in that place for a short period of time. You should be learning. This is the this is the thing that you have decided to do to make you money. Best you become an expert at what you are doing. Listen, you don't know how to cut straight hair. Hey, go on YouTube, get you some some thirty dollar man. They thir- the, the, the mannequins on on Amazon right now. I think the highest price might be forty two dollars. Most of them are in, in the like low twenty nine range, high thirty. $39. Buy you a mannequin. Go find you a class that will teach you how to use these tools properly. Go find a mentor. Go find another barber and say, hey, look, I don't get you. This is you can use this exact script. You can use it exactly. Hey, how you doing? Um, I've been following you or I know the type of clients that you serve. I don't have a lot of those clients, but I am struggling with this. Would you help me? I'm willing to pay you X amount of dollars. I understand that, that, you know, this is your, this is your service, but I'm trying to get better. Say no, go find somebody else. Say they say yes, then guess what? Now you get an opportunity to work with somebody and ask questions. Hey, bring your mannequin to their shop. Hey, can you show me how to do this? I'm really struggling with this. Really struggling. You have to be okay with asking questions, guys. Be okay with asking questions. It's no, it's not an issue, man. 
And stop thinking that it's an issue that you're asking, that you're asking questions. Oh, well, it makes me look dumb. I'm, I'm telling you, as long as I've been in this, even before I started cutting hair, I knew when I sat in the chair of a barber who didn't know, who didn't necessarily know what they were doing. Now, now we've talked about it. Like my, my, my dad cut my hair, you know, off and on growing up. And I also went to the barber. There was a difference in the way that my barber cut my hair versus my dad cut my hair. The results were similar, but were they exact? No. They were not exact. All right, my dad, listen, my dad did not understand how to do a C-cup. He did not understand how to do a C-cup. So when he refused to learn, or he didn't understand, didn't learn how to do it, I listen. It was time for me to go. I said, "Oh well, let me try it." I mean, it's just the C. He used to give me that old '90s block, you know, that hard '90 degree, although it was maybe maybe 45, you know, 90 90 inch. Man, give me that joint, crazy, crazy. Didn't mm -mm, no, but I knew the difference. Just like your clients know the difference, they've been getting their hair cut long enough, unless they've been getting their hair cut at home or badly or whatever, or they may have been cutting their own hair because you get a lot of people that do that. Um, but they can feel your energy. But if you say, look, I'm, I, this is not something that I'm necessarily really that good at. Or... Um, and, and 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 here's the thing: being honest, a client will respect honesty. They won't respect getting hustled. They don't respect getting hustled. Don't try to hustle them, right? Don't try to hustle them. And and that's the, that's the thing: like grind, hustle, all of those descriptive words that that, that describe. Uh, uh, and it really describes a level of adversity, right? That you're facing. You're facing the adversity because you're talking about grind and hustle like you out in the street somewhere. You're in a business doing business. You you might want to learn how to do business. Just saying. Learn how to do business. Stop taking everything for granted. Stop being upset. Don't don't you dare. Don't be one of them people. I'm telling you this right now. Don't you be one of them people when the barbers is like, oh, they don't tip. So I ain't mm -mm. if you don't like the prices that you got, you need to go up on price. Don't it, every sir like no. If I were to, if I was to charge a hundred dollars for a service, I don't expect a tip. It's a hundred dollars. I don't. I mean, I mean, even still to this, even with with what I do, right? I am thankful that clients are sitting in my chair. I don't know their financial situation. I don't know what's going on with them. I don't know why they couldn't necessarily tip. My prices are my prices, and that's just what they are. All right, I'm not. I'm not here to swindle people. I take care of the community. I provide a service to the community, and for every person that had that that comes and sits in my chair, it is an absolute honor. We have no issue as long as you pay what I ask. And if you can't pay, if you communicate that with me, guess what you'll probably get? Free service. Because I want you to come back when you're up. If you're down right now and you're like, look, man, I got this job interview. Uh, and I've done that before. I have literally done exactly what I'm telling you. Guy came in. 
got in my chair. He was talking about it. He was like, I got a job interview, so on and so forth. This, that, and the third. And you know what I told him? I said, okay, that's great. So I cut his hair, you know, everything like that. I said, I'm going to make sure you're good. And, and, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he had been out of work for a couple weeks. And he got the job, he, he, you know, he left and everything like that. I hooked him up. I said, you know what? Here, haircuts on me. You know, all I want to hear back from you is, you know, we can, we can settle up next time. You, you pay me on the next cut, but I just want to make sure, or I want you, um, I want you to know that that you're good. I like like listen, man, go get a job. I don't want you to be like that. Like I got and, and it wasn't disrespect, but I just gave it to him for free. He's like, You sure? Yeah, go get the job, man. Go get a job. There's nothing wrong with that. You're in, you're serving the community. Oh, well, I just can't afford it. No, you probably can. It's not a probably. You can. You can afford it. And it looks it looks better to the customer. Imagine making making someone's day. I, I, listen, what was it, Friday? I think Friday. Maybe, maybe, yeah, Friday. I just gave away a free haircut. To an older man. One. Old man came in. Sat down. Full of energy. Full of life. Like I hope to be. Like this man. At. 80 some years old. Old man said. Asked me what my name is. I told him. He said. Well I'm Wild Bill. I said alright Wild Bill. I knew I was there for a good time. I knew. That it was going to be a great service. He, Listen, he had the George Jefferson. Want no hair on top. I took the trimmer, skimmed the top of that joint, ran the clippers around the side, spun them around, hit them with a little, uh, with a little aftershave, had a good time. We chopped it up, laughed. You know, we talked about different stuff that he had done in his life. He asked me about, my military service, because I think I might have had my, yeah, he asked me about my military service, things like that. We chopped up, had a great time. Great time. The experience that I got from there, I didn't, that haircut might have took me 15 minutes. And it took me 15 minutes because I was talking. It probably really could have took me five, spun a chair around and, and, and got him out. But you know what the man said as soon as he got out of the chair? He said, all right. I'll see you next month. Now, I got a client based on the fact that I would stop chasing money. Money is a natural consequence. This is not a hustle. This is not a grind. This is a business. You are a business. You need to act like it. Act like you are a business because you are. Especially my booth renters. Oh, my booth renters. You guys are definitely a business. We sitting around talking about, oh man, shop on one of his booth rent every week and he ain't making sure people are here. Not his responsibility. Not his responsibility. Can can I be clear? Not his or her responsibility. You said I want my own money. I don't want nobody controlling my money. So guess what that meant? Nobody does control it but you. It's not the shop owner's responsibility to make sure that you get clients. It's yours. It's not the shop owner's responsibility to make sure that you got the tools and necessary things that you need. It's yours. You decide you want to be on Blueprint. 
oh man, that commission they robbing us. No, that what that commission if you in if, if you're in an effective shop, if you're in a good shop, and see that's also the thing. If you were about your business, you would interview and figure out what's going on. But you jumped in a place because you were just ready to work. Oh, this is the first place it took me, so I'm just gonna work here. Mm, really? Was that really what you was looking for? Is that really what you wanted? Oh man, I don't like it here, man. It's slow. I'm about to be in here. You know, the, the the owner he be cutting all the hair. Those his clients. They ain't yours. That ain't his responsibility. Mr. Hustle and Grind? Mrs. Hustle and Grind? They just don't take care of me. Really? But you said you wanted to do your own thing. You said, I never work in a commission shop. They told me how terrible it is, but you never worked there. Or if you did, you didn't maximize the opportunity to even learn what they were doing. And see, that's what people miss. You spend so much time standing behind a chair focused on what's going on behind the chair. You didn't pay attention to the fact of what you was paying commission for. What your commission was going to or anything like that. You didn't take the time to learn any of that. But you said, I'm not paying nobody else no commission on my money, on my hard work and everything like that. Okay, how that working out for you? How that working out for you? It's not. You struggling? You or or wait a second. Here's the even better one. This one's always my favorite. I'm making the same amount of money that I was making in the commission shop, but now I have more responsibility. I'm going to say this in the nicest way that I could possibly say this. And uh, I'm a younger guy, but I'm an older guy at heart. Big dummy. You didn't even know what you were jumping into. You just ain't like the fact that somebody was controlling your, your, your little money. So you felt, I'm making all this money for this business. And they doing it. They, no, they, they built a system. They gave you money and gave you a chance when nobody else was. They gave you the rep that you needed to get as good as you are. I'm so nice. But you didn't stick around. You didn't stick while you was getting the reps and becoming better, and they was coaching and teaching. And you know, a lot of these commission shops, they'll they'll bring trainers in. They'll send you the trainers. They'll do all of that type of stuff. Now you in the shop. Now you making all this money with a closet full of Jordans, dummy. Or you got. The nicest used car that you could possibly, you got a luxury used car with 200,000 miles on it. I look like I got money. Yeah, you do. you do. You do look like you have money. You look like you're doing something. And this is not for everybody, but for the people that I'm speaking to and for the people that I know this, I, I've been around the industry long enough to see it. This is what it is. I'm a business owner. Couldn't run a. Don't know the first thing about profits and losses. Don't know the first thing about filing taxes, how to file taxes, or what. Don't know none of that. None of it. I'm getting money. Or here's an even better one don't file taxes. You're just carrying money around. Oh, yeah, I always got years. Yeah, we do. It's a predominantly cash-based industry. We do. If you're a boosting or, or or you work for yourself, so so on and so forth. You always got a little money. Should at least. But it's neither here nor nor there, guys. I I believe that uh I believe that I got a little amped up for Sunday. I apologize. Apologize for, for getting a little hectic on Sunday, but you know, you guys chasing this money and, and, and everything like that. And you want to listen, I can't deal with it being slow. Yeah, well, slow is where you build. 
again, this is like like a barbershop is not a factory. If you wanted to be that busy, you have to do what the busy barbers did to get there. And you know what the busy barbers did to get there? They marketed themselves. They sat in the shop when it was slow. They took they took the walk ins that they could get. They was there from open to close. Yeah, maybe now they move a little different, but they busy. They busy. When they come to work, they don't come to work with, with just to sit around. When they get there, they're not just sitting around. Oh, they always on vacation. They always getting all da, 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 so on and so forth. Why are not getting, you don't, ah, well, you know. I don't know, guys. Just, like I said, keep in mind that as a barber, you know, one of our chief responsibilities is to provide services to the community. And not all of the community is rich. And not all of the community is poor either. But you're there to take care of, to and provide services to them all. I've known wealthy people to walk in and, and you know, Extremely wealthy people to walk into my shop and extremely unwealthy people to walk into my shop. Sit in my chair. I've known I've known both extremes. And guess what? I was prepared for them all. I gave them the best service that I could possibly give them. And over the years, if my service has gotten better, of, of course they have. That's what they should do. You shouldn't be getting, you, you, you shouldn't be getting worse or not growing. What are you, what are you doing? You said you want to do this every day. You said you want to do this as a career. I want to make a career out of this. Hmm. Maybe your definition of career and my definition of career are two different things, but what do I know? Huh? What do I know? But I don't know, guys. Either way, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Band of Barbers podcast. I really appreciate you. Tonight was episode 53. Don't know what I have in store for tomorrow's episode, but I'm sure it'll be something. We can keep going. We can keep grooving. Please like, comment, share, subscribe so we can grow the tribe. I really appreciate everything that you guys have done. I hope that these conversations spark new interest and growth in your mindset. And it helps you grow your business. And overall, it helps change your life. Thank you again for being a member of the band. It's been great. We'll see you tomorrow.